All right, welcome. What a turnout tonight. Man, it is exciting to see this many men of God gathered in one room. And the steak wasn't too bad either, was it? We had an incredible team of guys that were out there, out there growing those steaks, grilled up 575 steaks. So uh, just a special applause to them. We couldn't have done it without them. All right, if you all saw on your tables, there was an orange ticket. Hopefully you picked it up because it's for these prizes that are down here. If you didn't pick it up, I saw a couple guys going through grabbing all the extra ones and putting it in their pockets. So, so somebody's going to win. What do you think, Pastor? What, what, should we, uh, what should we do first? Uh, let's start small. Soccer ball. There you go. Soccer ball. Soccer ball. All right. Soccer ball. Let's go with... Two, three, five. <laughs> three, seven, zero, zero. Two, three, five, three, seven, zero, zero. Nobody wants to claim it. My granddaughter gets it. Two, three, five, three, six, eight, one. Sounds like a phone number. Nobody wants the, nobody wants the soccer ball. It's cool. I think we just toss it out to the crowd. Yeah. You want to? Yeah. <laughs> All right, Yeti mug, Yeti tumbler, two three five three six eight zero. Two three five. Three six eight zero. You do realize nobody's checking these tickets, right? So just <laughs> Well, maybe we'd have better luck with the Blackstone. Let's try this. Two three five three two one three. Two three five three two one three. That's good enough. That's good enough. That's good enough. Winner. <laughs> That's right. We got places to be, things to do. Preds. Preds. Two, three, five, three, two, eight, six. Oh. <laughs> now they're learning. Yeah, oh, yeah, now that. you're wanting to check the number. Another plane, Yeti. All right, another plane, Yeti. 235 There we go. He's not a yeller. He just politely raised his hand. <laughs> Titans, Yeti. Titans, Yeti. Two three five three seven two seven. Two three five three seven two seven. Three seven two seven? No? All right, next. Two three five three five nine seven. Three five nine seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. It was going to anybody wearing a Titans shirt next. <laughs> Pass that down for me, gentlemen. Dozen golf balls. Dozen golf balls. That'll last Scott Johnson the first hole. <laughs> you can tell Scott Johnson went shopping with me, actually. He picked them out. Titleist True story. Tour Speed. 235-3595. Back there. Whoa. <laughs> Sitting beside each other? Come on. Come on. You play golf? No? <laughs> Congratulations. That lasts a long time. A long time. Fishing rod. Ugly stick. Ugly stick. Get, 2, hit 3, with 5, ugly stick. 3, 2, 7, 6. 
Yo, yo, missionary. <laughs> Got it. All right, the 28-inch griddle with Black foldable stone. locking legs. Blackstone grill. <laughs> Blackstone grill, 235-3228. Two, three, three, two, two, oh. 3228. Two, if nobody claims it, I get to keep this one. Bingo. Somebody check it. Make sure that's right. 228. We're going to just leave it up here. Come get it when it's over with, all right? Good deal. All right. Well, well you got Pastor, that? Oh, the cooler. I was hoping nobody would notice. I was going to take it home. <laughs> yes. All right. 235-3443. Yeah, four hands. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. The charismatic group right there just got it. Did one of you have it? No? Bunch of liars. Those are all our connect group leaders right there in a little circle. <laughs> Did somebody back there raise your hand? Somebody have it, sure enough? 3443. Three. Anybody have 3443? Three, three? Right? No, Skojo didn't have it. <laughs> How about 3288? Yeah, yeah. Roger. Yeah. All right. You can have it. There you go. It's got a handle and everything. He's leaving. Watch him. He's going to go on out the door. You through? All right. Guys, thank you all for coming tonight. I hope you had a great meal. I know you did. Thank you to all the guys that cooked. Uh, I appreciate Chris asking me to speak at this uh, inaugural meeting of uh, kickoff of our men's ministry. You know, we've tried through the years to have men's ministry in different ways, and uh, men's ministry has to be more than a steak dinner once a year or a wild game dinner or something like that. It's got to be so much more than that. And our heart really is to have a ministry that will engage men at a level that will help them become who God wants them to be. And Now, you think about this for a minute. 500 men, 500 men on a Saturday night gathered together in this place I'm telling you, the men in this room can change this community. We can make a difference in every home, every school, every church. The men in this room can change this community. And we're not in this by ourselves. Long Hall has got a church full of men just like you that want to see a difference in our community. Northfield down the street, community church the other way. There are men all over the place. We've just got to understand that we can make a difference but we've got to quit playing games. We've got to quit playing games. And I want to talk to you tonight for just a few minutes, and then I'm going to challenge you with something. Chris is going to come back and tell you about something. that I, I don't just, the, the purpose of this was just not to get you to come to one event one Saturday night. I want to challenge you to do something that goes a little bit beyond that. I want to talk to you tonight about some misunderstandings about manhood. There are a lot of misunderstandings out there, and the fact is that people think that they've got a map to manhood when in fact they don't. You know, when most, not most, but a lot of us in this room, when we were growing up, we used maps like this. You fold these out. This isn't really a road map. It's an aeronautical chart. It's got roads and rivers and lakes and all kinds of things that you would use if you were flying an airplane uh, VFR, things that help you in navigational skills. But, you know, some people can not only not read a map like this, they can't even fold a map like this. They just don't know how to deal with it. So we went from maps like this with uh, charts or foldable maps that you would keep in your glove compartment. You don't see these too much anymore, do you? Nobody really use, uses those. There are a lot of people that don't know how to read a map like that. Then we had these. Remember these? Atlases. Boy, you were big time when you got one of these, right? You had every state. You could, you could go anywhere and just turn to the right page and when it'd run off that page to another one, it'd tell you where to turn. You could find everywhere you wanted to go in these atlases. And if you had a good insurance agent, mine came from State Farm. If you had a good insurance agent, you'd probably get one of these every year or so for free. We learned to navigate that way. But then we went to this. Isn't it amazing 
that not only every interstate and every major highway, but every nook and cranny is in this thing. It amazes me when I'm out in the country sometimes and uh, I ask for directions and it tells me about these little farm to market roads. It's just incredible what all information is in this thing. Now, I want to talk to you tonight about a, a road map to manhood. It's not something that you get out of a navigational chart or really out of your phone. Um, if you ask Siri some questions, she knows the answer to them, but she doesn't know the answer to everything. Hey, Siri, directions to heaven. She's not even going to answer that. Hey, Siri, are you there? Hey, Siri. Hey, Siri. Hey, Siri. Hey, Siri. She doesn't even want to talk to me. There she is. Hey, Siri. Directions to heaven. One possibility is Hubcap Heaven, Nashville, on Murfreesboro Pike in Nashville. Oh, yeah, that's what I want. I, I, I want her to tell me how to get to Hubcap Heaven in Nashville. No? No? That wasn't what I had in mind. And the same thing if you ask her about manhood. I, I, I played with that a little bit this week, would ask questions about manhood, and she gave me all kinds of answers. You know, the reality is that there are all kinds of answers out there all over society about what it means to be a man. There are all kinds of models out there. Um, there are probably a thousand different, these days, there are probably a thousand different models. I, I've kind of put them in four categories. There's what I would call the the macho maniac model of manhood. That's the guy that you first met when you were in elementary school that just decided that the way he was going to live his life was by overpowering everybody else. He was just the bully. He just decided that if he was meaner, if he was a little bit stronger or bigger, as you grow up, you know, if you get bigger toys or guns or whatever it is that you just kind of bully your way into manhood and you overpower the people around you and our world's full of people like that and they learn it somewhere they learn it from a dad or they learned it from television they learned it from movies you know it's the Rambo model of manhood that being a man is just being macho and just overpowering everybody around you then there's a model that I would call uh, the great pretender model. How many of you are old enough to remember All in the Family? All in the Family was a TV show back in the 70s that I wouldn't recommend to you young guys because it was really a racist kind of show that for whatever reason when we were watching it in the 70s, just where culture was at that point, people watched it and found it funny. But the reality is that Archie Bunker was a great model of what manhood is not. Archie Bunker was one of those guys that the way he made himself feel better was by putting everybody else down. So he had a nickname for everybody, and anybody who didn't look like him with the color of his skin, with lifestyle, anybody that wasn't like him, he had a name for them. R racist names for everybody. His son-in-law was Meathead. His wife was Dingbat. And the thing was, even though he made himself feel better by putting everybody else down, the reality is that everybody around him knew that he was a fool. They all just laughed at him. He didn't know that. He didn't know that. He thought he rose head and shoulders above everybody else, and the reality is, behind his back, everybody, everybody was laughing at him. He was just a pretender of what it means to be a man. A third category that I've put down is just a world-class wimp. There are a lot of those today. These are the guys that have been beaten down. They've been beaten down by their boss. They've been beaten down by sometimes a spouse, sometimes by their mother early on. These are guys that just never really learned what it means to be a man, and they just live their life kind of cowering to everybody. Never really know what it means to be a man. And then there's a fourth category that's really prominent these days, and I'd call it the gender bender model. Don't even know what it means to be a man. Can't define manhood. They haven't understood the most basic principle that male and female, he created them. God made you to be a man. 
And the problem is, and, and there, there are a lot of different people that you can read that say the same thing in different ways, but the problem with manhood is that confused men, when it comes to what being a man is and the model of manhood, confused men make bad choices. And that's why society's in the mess that we're in. What is it that ignites the heart of a man? What is it that really inspires us? What is it that drives us to be our best and to, to be who God wants us to be? Some of you have read Wild at Heart. You're familiar with that book, John Eldridge, great book. He talks about three things that really drive men. He talks about a battle that we need to win. He, 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 he talks about a beauty, a woman, a beauty that we need in our lives. He, he talks about an adventure. Robert Lewis in Men's Fraternity. How many of you have been through some of Robert Lewis's stuff? A lot of us in our church have. Robert Lewis and all of the Men's Fraternity things in 33, and even going way back, if you go way back to some of the first stuff that Robert wrote, um, Raising a Modern Day Knight, remember that? All of that revolved around what it really means in God's economy to be a man. He talks about a, a, a work that we have to do. Work's not a punishment from God. A lot of people mistakenly think that work came about as a result of sin and when Adam and Eve sinned, God ordained that Adam would have to work for the rest of his life. Work came before the fall in the garden. Work is not a punishment. Work is a gift that God gives to us. Work is a part of what helps us to, to fulfill who God made us to be as men. Robert Lewis talks about that work that we have to do and that will of God that we have to obey and the woman that God puts in our life that we are to love. Different writers say it all different ways, but what I want to do tonight is just really quickly just challenge you on where we truly find our roadmap to manhood. So I'm going to share something with you, and it won't take me probably five more minutes to do this, but then I want to challenge you to go beyond this. I want to challenge you to be a part of something that's coming up in the next few weeks here in our church to help you become, now focus on this word, a better man. It doesn't matter where you are. You could be somebody that's walked with the Lord for many, many years. You can be in the fourth chapter, for the fourth chapter, uh, uh, quarter of life the, the the toward the end of life but you can still be better see none of us have arrived none of us have got everything figured out we can all grow one step further to be who he wants us to be you may be just starting out on this journey you may be a young man on the front side of this you may not be married yet may not have children yet may just kind of be getting your idea for what life's going to look like started it doesn't matter where you are on the front end in the middle on the back side we can all be better a better man I mentioned Sunday that we were going to be starting right after Labor Day Chris will tell you about this in a minute we we're going to be starting a, an eight-week study I misspoke on that it's not eight weeks it's 11 weeks 11 weeks less than three months it's an effort to help you really come to understand what it truly means to be on this road to manhood, to, to, to be a better man, wherever you are, to be a better man, to take one step further, to be a better husband, a, a better employee, a better father, a better grandfather, a better man, wherever you are to be better. That 11-week study is going to challenge you to really connect to connect with a biblical model, a life-changing biblical model, and the, the model comes from right here. This is the road map. That 11 weeks is really going to challenge you to connect not only to a biblical model, but it's going to, connect, to challenge you to connect to some mentors, to sit around some table with some other men, to have some men that can speak into your life. You can speak into their life. Do you know that every one of you have something to offer sitting around a table with other men? Everybody here has an insight. Everybody here is at a different stage in life. Everybody has something that you can offer to a conversation that helps everyone else become more of who God wants us to be. So some of you on the front side don't sit there and think, well, you know, I, these, these guys know more than I do. Well, we're all in this together. Those of you on the back side don't sit there and think, well, this is for the young guys. I've already been down that road. I've already I've run my race. You've got something to offer. 
One of the things I love about this church, I genuinely love about this church is that we truly are. A lot of churches say this, but it's just a desire. They want to be, but they're not. We truly are a multi-generational church. We're not just a church of millennials. We're not just a church, though you might think it if you came in here for the 945 service. We're not just a church of gray hairs. We've got folks from the Wilson Hall service that meets at 9.45 to the 11 o'clock service. If you never come to the 11 o'clock service, I wish you'd stick your head in here sometime and stick your head in one of these doors over here so you can see over there. How many of you know what I'm talking about when I say, yeah, those 11 o'clock guys know exactly what I'm talking about because that whole section right there, I mean the whole section is full of college students, young adults and young men, young women. You ought to hear them when somebody's baptized. It sounds like the Titans just scored. I found myself early on wanting to say to them, hey, guys, calm down a little bit. And then I decided I'm not going to, I wouldn't dare tell them to calm down. I want them to get more worked up. I want them to get more excited about what it means to, to trust the Lord. I was in a hospital a few weeks ago. I was wearing a COVID mask like you always have to do in a hospital these days. And I'd walk down a hallway and there were two guys that were there with a gurney. They were with a, a, a transfer service. They were, uh, they were paramedics. And they were there to pick someone up, to, I assume to pick someone up to take them someone, somewhere else. They might have brought someone in there. I don't know that for sure. But they're standing in the hallway beside their gurney. I nodded to them, said hello, went into the room, talked to the person I'd gone there to see, prayed with the person I'd gone there to see. When I came out, one of them was still standing there. He said, uh, he called my name. He said, you're who I am, aren't you? And I said, I am. And I pulled my mask down a little bit so he could see. And he pulled his mask down and he said, I'm a part of the rowdy group on Sunday mornings at 11 o'clock. Man, that, that, that blesses my heart. There's some, guy, there's some young guys that really want to grow to be a man. How can they do that? Y you can help them. You can help them. We can all become better men. Wherever we are, we can become better. Here's the model. I want to show you something real quickly. Give me just a couple of minutes. I'll be done. I'll let Chris come up and finish. You can take any of the Gospels that you want to take. I'll just take Matthew because that's the first one, but you can do it in any of the Gospels. There is a model that's given to us in the life of Jesus that I think we've got to learn how to live out the model that he showed us. Let me, let me tell you what I mean. In any of the Gospels, the first part of it, in Matthew it's the first seven chapters. The others have a different number because the, the Gospels are different size books, but it's all the same pattern. In the first seven chapters of Matthew, Jesus' life is characterized by the word surrender. He was surrendering his life to what God had sent him here to do. That's when he was baptized. That's when he went into the wilderness and he struggled with what the enemy was trying to, to, to get him to go away from God's plan. It, it, it was in that period of time when he was surrendering to his parents and he was doing the things as a boy that a boy would do and he was growing and all of that. And it kind of goes up through the Sermon on the Mount. And if you, if you just read the first seven chapters of, of, any, of Matthew or the first part of any of the Gospels, you might get an impression of Jesus that he was a little bit on the timid side. He was just always kind of doing what others said. He, he was surrendering himself. Some might even take those early years of his life and say, you know, he, he came, it comes across a little bit feminine, you know. No real power in any of that. But then you get to the middle part of the Gospels. In Matthew, it starts in chapter 8. Matthew 8, 1 says he came, when he came down from the mountain. Now, the mountain was when he had preached the Sermon on the Mount. When he came down from the mountain, Matthew 8, 1 says, the crowds followed him. And that's when the fireworks started. He healed a centurion. He told the winds and the wave to, waves to obey him. He raised someone from the dead. He took a blind man and he gave him back his sight. He gave a deaf man back his hearing. He fed 5,000 with just a few loaves and fish. He walked on water. 
And everything that happens, which is the majority of all of the Gospels, everything that happens in that middle part of the Gospels is characterized by the word strength. And you can't see what Jesus did, and you can't hear what he said without saying, that's a man's man. And the strength only came because he first surrendered. Now, the last part in all the Gospels, you get over to the end of it. In Matthew, it's over about chapter 27 on to the end. That's when he made the sacrifice where he gave himself so that we might have life. Now, that's the pattern for manhood. You surrender yourself to the Lordship of Christ. You stop playing games. It's not about going to church on Sunday morning. It's not about having this life over here with my Christian friends and this life over here with my work friends and this life over here with my other friends and I really don't want any of those lines to get crossed because it's kind of different for every group. Surrendering to the Lordship of Christ is to say that Jesus is the Lord of my life 24 hours a day, 7 days a week and my, my relationship with Him is not dependent on where I am or what time of the week it is. My relationship with Him is based on the fact that He is the Lord of my life. And when you come to that moment to say Jesus is Lord and you've surrendered your life to Him, the result of that is a strength to be the man that God wants you to be. And it's then only then that you will make the sacrifice for your wife for your children for your grandchildren where you will be able to make the sacrifice that helps them be who God created them to be it all starts with surrender Micah chapter 6 verse 8 has a verse that I've read a thousand times and you have too and I noticed something just a couple of weeks ago that I'd never noticed before listen to it he has told you this is the word I had not really ever focused on he has told you men men he has told you men what is good and what the Lord requires of you. Here it is. To act justly, to love faithfulness, and to walk humbly with your God. When we come to that point, it's really not rocket science. When we come to that point where we've surrendered to the Lordship of Christ... We find a strength in Him that allows us to, 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 to live humbly, to, 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 to walk in His footsteps, to, to, to walk with our God. When, when we have the strength to do that, the end result of that is that we will make a difference in this community like we have never seen before. Guys, we can change this community. The guys in this room, some of you are visitors from other places. It fits for your church just as well. The guys in this room can turn this church upside down if we stop playing games and we truly get serious about what it means to be a godly man. The model is Jesus, and it's found right here. You want to be a better man? Chris, come tell us about the study and how these guys can be a part of being a better man in the days ahead. Let me pray for you before he comes. Father, thank you for these guys that have come tonight. We've enjoyed a meal. We've enjoyed fellowship. We've laughed a little bit. And now we've heard a challenge that comes really from the pages of your word. Lord, help us to acknowledge that Jesus is Lord of our life. And because he is Lord, he will give us strength. And when we find that strength, we will be willing to sacrifice for those that you have put in our lives, our wife, our children, we can change this community. We can make a difference together. We can make a difference. We can be better men if we will. Help us to be willing to do it. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Chris. Thanks, Pastor. Are you guys ready to change the community? Yes. That doesn't sound like it. Yeah, that was one guy. How about your household? You ready to change your household? 
Ready to change the community? Yeah. Turn this church upside down? Yeah. All right. Well, we got to start somewhere. Let me tell you a little bit about where we're going as a men's ministry and, and what we're doing and, and what we're not doing. Men's ministry is going to look a little bit different maybe than what you're used to. It's going to look kind of the same. Obviously, tonight we ate steak, and I don't see that going anywhere. But it's going to be different as well. You know, men's ministry is about a community and building a community of men who can come together and who can depend on one another, who can rely on one another, who can lock arms, who can lock shields and come together to change the church and to change the community. Uh, hopefully, most of you guys are already part of a community that we have built in, which would be connect groups. Connect groups is, is a built-in community, and you don't have to be in a, a men's connect group to have uh, connections and accountability with other men. You know, my goal is to, over the next few months, encourage and give you opportunities uh, to have those, those connections with, with some of the other men. And it's also not our goal to keep you busy, to pull you out and just give you one more thing to do away from the home, because that would be counterproductive to what we're trying to do. But we do have some things coming up, and it, it's going to look, like I said, it's going to look a little bit the same, it's going to look a little bit different, because we do want to get out there and we do want to be community-oriented. Uh, but first, let me tell you about some of the things we have coming up. The first one, obviously, is Better Man, the Better Man study, which Pastor did a great job of kind of going over. It's an 11-week study. And the way it works is it's done through tables. So you'll have a, a table leader, a table guide, whatever you want to call them. And he'll be, you'll have a table guide and you'll have six other men around the table, or five other men, however it works out. And we'll watch a short, or about 30, 35 minute video. And then afterwards we'll work in our groups, at our tables, to go through the workbooks. Now, the study is at 6 a.m. It's at 6 a.m. on Tuesday mornings. And some of you are saying, 6 a.m. on Tuesday mornings, I'm already at work. Some of you are saying, 6 a.m. at Tuesday mornings, I, I'm still asleep, I'm still in bed. Well, some of you at work, I understand some of you have to work, but we made it at 6 a.m. on a Tuesday morning because that usually doesn't take away from family time. Usually the only sacrifice people have to make that don't go to work early or they have to get up an hour or so early. So it is a little bit convenient, inconvenient, and you may lose a little bit of sleep, but hopefully it'll be worth it. It's inconvenient for me, because I usually take my daughter to school, I drop her off at 7 a.m., but for 11 weeks, my wife and my younger daughter will have to get up a little bit early, and they'll make that trek to school. But we hope it'll be worth it. We hope it'll be worth it for myself and my family, because after that 11 weeks, I hope to be a better man for them, for the church, and for my community. So I just wanted to go over some of these topics. This was on your table if you didn't get a chance to read it. I'm going to go over the 11 topics. Every week there's, an, there's a different topic, and the first week is manhood today. It goes over manhood today. S second week is looking back. Session three is called unpacking. Session four is the dad factor. Session five is defining manhood. Session six, God and the good life. Week seven would be a real man courageously follows God's word. Session eight, a real man loves and protects God's women. Session nine, a real man excels at God's work. Session 10 is a real man betters God's word. And session 11 is manhood and the future. Those are the 11 weeks. And I really encourage you guys, if you can, to join this study. After we leave here today, there's a booth set back. Scott Abbott and Todd Camerzell will be out back at the booth with a sign-up sheet, and you can sign up there for the study, at which point uh, we'll figure out tables. And there's a workbook to purchase for $6. It's not mandatory. You do not have to purchase it but it will be available for purchase if you'd like it on the morning of the study. So that's the Better Man study. A couple other things we have coming up is a golf tournament, October 27th, which we're working on. 
like I said, some of the old. We'll have some of the old. Uh, we have a fishing tournament coming up. We have, I wrote it down because I know I'll forget something. We have a men's Bible study on Wednesday night at 6.30 p.m. We're going through currently the men of the Old Testament. It goes from 6.30 to 7.45. That's on purpose. So you men with kids that drop your kids off, it runs at the same time as the, as the student group. So you can drop your kids off, go to the men of the Old Testament study, and go pick the kids back up. Um, for those of you without kids, you can stay longer in fellowship afterwards. And that's at 6.30 on Wednesday nights, third floor of the weekly building. Father and Son Adventure Weekend, second through fifth grade. Now, those of you with older sons, don't worry. We have something coming up as well. It's just not imminent, so we're not advertising yet. But we have something coming up for fathers and sons uh, of uh, middle school and high school. We have father and daughter. As always, we have the father-daughter dance, which goes up into fifth grade. And this year, we're going to do a father-daughter adventure weekend for uh, the, older, the older daughters. And information will be coming out on that. And we will be doing uh, something that a lot of people are working from home now. And I keep getting people up, coming up to me, and, and they're saying, hey, I work from home, but I don't, I don't get a chance to leave my house very often. I notice at the end of the week, maybe I haven't left a one-mile radius of my house. And, man, I'd really love to have lunch with you. I've gotten that over and over and over. And they don't even like me. They just want to get out of their house. So... I realize there's, there's, there's something to that. So I'm working on, and I don't know exactly what it looks like, but I'm working on putting something together where men can get together once a week, get out of the house, and fellowship over a meal together. We'll meet in a restaurant and, and have a meal together. And uh, for, for, for those of you that work at home, or if you work local and want to join us, go ahead. And the details on that will be coming out. Which leads me to Facebook. Um, I was encouraged to start a Facebook group which I wasn't too excited about, but I think it's, the, it's probably the best way to communicate uh, with you guys on things that are coming up, such as where we're going to meet for lunch or what different men's, men's events are coming up. So if you have Facebook, you can sign up for the Facebook. It's FBCH Men's Ministry Facebook. It's not a page. It's a group. I'm trying to remember the difference. I'm not a Facebook guru, but Facebook group. So um, I don't know exactly what the difference is, but it's not like, I guess we don't go on there and post pictures and stuff, but it's information, and when we post stuff, it'll come to your, come to your Facebook. So sorry if it sounds like I don't know what I'm talking about. I really don't, but I do know that you can get information about the men's ministry through that. So guys, really what we want to do is, going forward with the men's ministry, is we want to be service-oriented. We want to go out and we want to partner with the community and we want to be the hands and feet of Jesus. That's what we want to do. We want to impact and affect the community. We don't want to stay in here within the walls of the church and have steak nights and have Bible studies and go to camp out retreats with each other. I mean, we'll do all that, but we need to do something with it. We need to leave the walls of the church, and we need to go out and find ways to get involved in the community and affect the community. Because as Pastor was saying, the only way to, the only way to change a community is to get out in it. So we're looking at ways to do that. So if you, have, if you guys come up with opportunities and you think of opportunities, how we can partner with the community, uh, my team and I are still, still working through that and seeing what that looks like. So we would love to hear some, some ideas. Grab me in the hallway, call me, uh, or send me an email, whatever, whatever you want to do. We'd like to hear some, some opportunities on that. But uh, we really do want to get out and partner with the community and, and uh, be the hands and feet of Christ and take this thing, all that we're doing, outside of the walls of the church. So that's pretty much it. That's what we got. We got a call to manhood. We've got opportunities for us to grow. And again, at the, end of the, uh, at the end of this, as we're getting ready to close here, as you walk out those back doors, there's a table, there's a better man sign, and if you guys want to sign up to be better men, which I'm sure we all do, you can sign up at that table. So uh, that's it. Let me pray for us, and we can get out of here. 
Father, I thank you for these men who came today. I thank you for the many volunteers that, that came forward to, to put, make this night happen. Lord, where over 500 men came together uh, to just learn how to, how to become better men. Lord, I just pray, God, that we would all leave here changed, that we wouldn't leave here the same men that we came in, Lord, but we would answer that call to be better men. Whether it's going to the better man study, uh, whether it's going, whatever it is, Lord, I just pray, God, that we would all answer the call to be better men. So, Lord, I thank you, I love you, and just pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, guys.